Hello! Welcome back to the Prog Blog. In this case, a video. Uh, after a few weeks of detouring to this and that and some other things, we're getting back to what the people want, which is uh, food, and namely candy. All sorts of candy. So this is uh, Eric Eats Candy that he's not necessarily quite sure what it is. Uh, so, uh, as, as you might see if I post the pictures, which, good reminder to myself, post the pictures below the video. Um, unsurprisingly, as in most of the places in the West, uh, candy here generally falls into two broad categories, your chocolates and your non-chocolates. Um, the non-chocolates are heavily represented by uh, gummies of various kinds, so heavily German influence there, you might say, so a lot of Haribo products, similar sort of soft things like that. Um, and some hard candies, and I'll try one of those famous ones, but actually a couple. But by and large, most of the things that were sort of like authentically checked that I was looking at were of the chocolate bar uh, or whatnot variety, um, which is kind of disappointing because I'm actually not that much of a chocolate lover. I mean, I don't hate chocolate, but it's not it's not my favorite. Um, so yeah, so. Uh, I, in doing a little bit of research, trying to find the things that were sort of, you know, more authentically Czech or at least Central Eastern European that you might not have other places, because they're, you know, like, there's a lot of, like, Snickers and Kit Kats and Skittles and all that stuff, you know. Um, you can't get the really, really super-duper American things like Hershey bars, which aren't popular outside of America, really, and probably Canada. Um, but, you know, like, lint chocolate bars, like even little truffle ball truffles that they do, which I quite like, those are available. But most of them are significantly more expensive, like those imported candies, chocolates, much more on the expensive side than, like, these things. So I bought all of this candy, mm, roughly $5, maybe, because, like, this thing of lentilki, lentilki, was, I believe, eight or nine crowns which is less than 50 cents. So, uh, so I have a glass of water to cleanse my palate. Um, I have done no external research on any of these products. Uh, I have looked at the packaging. I have not even, if I wasn't sure what the, if the flavor was, I have not even translated it. So, uh, most of these, uh, you know, you can kind of maybe figure out what, uh, from the packaging, you can see what a banani maybe tastes like, you know, easy guess. Or a margot, margot, I don't know. Um, but like, or kofila looks like it has maybe coffee flavor because of the coffee beans. So that would be interesting. Yeah, so I don't know what I'm going to be tasting. I'll try to describe them to you and then uh, maybe pick a favorite. So, uh, let's start with the non-chocolates. Actually, let's alternate, because I think chocolate's a very strong flavor. I think I'll need to cleanse my palate and change things up. So let's start, actually, with one of the chocolates. Let's actually start with Lentilki. Um, a lot of these come from the same companies. A, a couple of them, I think, are now owned by Nestle. Uh, actually, I think, including this one. Yeah, this is now owned by Nestle. But the brand is Orion from 1896, and a lot of, a lot of chocolate products uh, seem to have that logo. Another very popular one is Milka. Um, which, I mean, I would say half the chocolate things at the Tesco across the street are Milka. Including Milka, uh, they have Chips Ahoy flavored chocolate and they have Oreo flavored chocolate. And you can buy Oreos, but only through Milka. It's really weird. You can't just buy like a thing of Oreos the way you would, uh, in the States or, or Canada or I think in the UK even. Um, instead it's sort of like, they're covered in chocolate, and they're through Milka, so it's like Milka has the branding for Oreo. I don't know. It's weird. But anyway, I didn't buy any Milka, because they just sort of do chocolate. Like, I've, I've had it. I don't actually like their chocolate that much. It's sort of, to me, it's a bit like Hershey's, except not as, because it's not the kind of crappy Hershey's I grew up with. It's not as good to me. It's, it's just not interesting chocolate. It's sort of very, it's very sweet. It's very, me. I'm not that keen. Um... And, but they didn't do anything that I saw that was, like, different or interesting. And they're not, uh, like, if you Googled Czech candies. I mean, Milka comes up way far lower than most of this stuff. So, anyway. So, we'll start with Lentilki. 
which, judging from the packaging, are little um, little chocolate covered candy things. I believe uh, there's a there's a British candy. I think it's also they have them in America or in Canada, maybe. Oh, there's a guy on a skateboard at the end. Oh, look, it's it's hip, it's radical. Um, I believe they're a lot like Skittles, not American Skittles, which are sugary and and uh, sweet and um, sort of fruit flavored. But uh, Skittles, British Skittles, are kind of like plain M and M's, sort of. So I think that's what these are essentially. So let me open the box. Oh, the little pours out. We'll try a few Lentilki. I don't know if the colors are different flavors or not. You can see. Ah, you can see sort of like different colored things. So here's the yellow one. And the reds. I don't detect any difference in flavors. Um, they're fine. Um, definitely, um, definitely feel like M and M's, plain M and M's. Uh, different colors, obviously. Here's some sort of pastel ones. I don't know if these are special for Easter or if they're just always this way. Um, yeah, they're not bad. Um, you can get actual M&Ms here, um, both plain and peanut, and occasionally I think you can get some of the other flavors. But these seem like a... But they're again, they're significantly more expensive. Um, these seem like a good substitute. So, when Hilke... Um, thumbs up. Not, not amazing, but good solid little chocolate candy. Okay. Sip of water. A bit of cleanse the palate. Um, now the only, I kind of cheated with this one. This is a Haribo. Um, Haribo, of course, is, is a German company. Um, and you can get a lot of Haribo products in America, especially if you go to like a, um, a sort of European themed, store or like um, the little sort of Korean market deli that was by my apartment in Alexandria I always had a lot of Haribo. It's like, so if you you just find stores that decide to carry like 10 varieties of Haribo that you might not find in other stores. But they do the original gummy bears and things like that. So um, they had like 25, 30 different Haribo products. Most of which though you can probably find in America here and there. But I didn't want to just like throw them in because it is a big part of Czech candy culture is the gummies of various kinds. Um, they had a few sort of like soft, maybe circus peanuts, but I really hate those, so I wasn't going to eat them on camera or off. So, but I will have some Haribo. These are the Mega Roulette Fizz. I think that means they have like sort of soury or, or fizziness, I think. Um, I've mainly wouldn't have been eating Haribo. I get the sour cherries. I think they're really delicious. Or the cola bottle, or just the traditional. So here's an orange one. Hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Definitely has a lot of sour. Fine. It's Haribo. It's not my. Um, let's try. Let's try on a white, which is usually pineapple. It's one like grapefruity. It's not super pleasant. Again, fine. That sour really kicks in at the end. Mouth is watering. Um, fine. Um, I on, I love gummies. The the sour flavor is so intense. I don't know. I could eat this entire pack, and I can usually eat about five pounds of gummies in one sitting. So that's that's impressive. Um, so not bad, not uh, probably not going to switch from my usual gummy eating to these mega roulette days. Okay, so next, let's do um, the Ledevoy Kashtani. Uh, Kashtani. Now this is, um, by the way, most of these there I got from like the actual candy aisle, which I'll post pictures of. Um, but these are also, by and large, things you will find at the cash register. Like, uh, it's funny, the Tesco I go to, like, there's an aisle you sort of walk through through self-checkout, and they have a lot of this stuff. Then the actual registers, it's almost always the American candy, which is interesting. I think probably because they cost more, maybe higher margin. But anyway, these are still all, I mean, super-duper common, like, you know, to scrap them at the register. Uh, another Orion product. Um, 
It looks like they've been making them for 50 years, since, or at least over 50 years now, since 1966. Um, and it's the original from the year 1966, uh, which means it was created during communism, assuming it's actually from the Czech Republic. Um, yeah, so let's try it. I, I can't tell anything. It looks like it's just chocolate, so chocolate covered chocolate. I think. Sort of little like uh, sort of little so individually so chocolate fell off. Separated things. So yeah, you can see sort of like just sort of like a layer of chocolate around other texture of chocolate. This is kind of truffly. It's a bit on the dark. It's much darker. Certainly, than like a milk bar, more than the chocolate and the lemon toki. Still not the highest quality of chocolate, still a bit mm, affordable, let's put it that way. Um, not bad. Um, if, if you really like just chocolate, because it really is, it's just chocolate around more chocolate. I'm trying to think of what it compares to, and I don't think, I don't think there's anything in the States that's sort of like. Usually, if you do a chocolate bar, on the inside, it's something else, and uh, not just sort of like chocolate. So I guess the closest it would be like sort of maybe those, those limbed truffles or something like that, where you have, because it's not liquid, it's sort of a mushy solid, um, almost like a chocolate nougat or something. Um, but yeah, it's just pretty much a strong chocolate flavor. It's fine. I'm, I don't think I'll ever feel the need to buy one of these again, but I don't like hate it. I will finish eating it at some point in the next few days. By the way, I'm going to be sick from, to my stomach. Very ill by the time this is done, probably. So, uh, so of those two, I would say the Phil Lentoki is definitely better. But your mileage may vary depending on your chocolate preference. Um, so next, we have Flavia. Now this is a hard candy, so I might have to edit the video as you, instead of having you watch me eat a hard candy in real time. And just looking at the package, it looks like it's some sort of, I don't know, sugary hard shell around uh, maybe chocolate, I think. And the little slogan is something about, like, for our victory? I don't know. Uh, and it's original uh, since 1968. Um, and, uh, yeah, so, okay, let's try this. There, there. Uh, Injury to be wrapped, which is nice and handy. Slavia. Oh, it's clear. You can actually see the stuff on the inside. Oh, I wasn't expecting that. It's kind of minty. So it's like a peppermint. Not super minty. Although it's getting a bit more minty. So it's sort of a minty mild side. Um, not unpleasant. Maybe about like, like the texture, the mouthfeel is different, but maybe like starlight mint level mintiness, like sort of that area. It's not like super minty, more like candy that happens to be mint as opposed to a mint. Um, let's see if I can hack into this with my teeth. No, oh, it's quite soft on the inside. It's kind of I mean vaguely chocolatey, I think. But it's not super Yeah. I mean Yeah, the inside the I think chocolatey or maybe even coffee ish. It's sort of like it's very it's just kinda of sweet. I'm expecting more of a flavor change on the inside. Maybe if you eat it the proper way and you sort of let it melt in your mouth, you get a more interesting experience. But I like I tend to like the the feeling of soft candy. You can still crunch the sort of softness in in the hard candy. Like some hard candies, like Jolly Ranchers, you have to just like suck on. Haha. <laughs> um, 
square thumb like this and some others like fairly quickly you can start munching on them and it forms that lovely sort of like sugary clump in the back of your mouth. I actually like that feeling. Um, I don't know what these are for. I don't. I don't know. I don't know what purpose they serve. Um, yeah, I think it's actually coffee on the inside and not chocolate. I'll, I'll, I, there, there will be um, along with a few photographs and things like that. I'm going to put just basic product descriptions uh, on the blog post below this video, um, so you can at least, if you want to know more about Slavia. But I wanted to go in fairly blind, so I mean they're okay. I don't. I'm not sure why that would be a thing you would do. Sort of like peppermint hard candy wrapped around a coffee-ish sort of center. Sure, whatever. I kind of wanted to like those more. I wasn't sure what they were going to be, but I was hoping they'd be, I don't know, something else. Anyway, um, back to our chocolate pile. Um, I mean, that's, that taste is lingering. But in like a minty, refreshing way, more just sort of like, eh, mint. Um, so next we have uh, Margot, which, as you can tell from the label, is a Kokosem. Yeah. Yeah. Still getting the hang of this video thing. So cocoa fem, uh, so that means with coconut. Um, I don't know much more about it. It looks like it's sort of just coconut, maybe shredded coconut on the inside of a chocolate bar. Yeah, so maybe like a, a mound, because I don't think it's dark chocolate, which a mound is. And it's sort of, what's, woo. That is a potent artificial smell, let me tell you that. Like, mmm. That's not, that's not pleasant. It's almost like acetone. It's not, it does not make you want to eat this, I'll tell you that right now. Uh, but let's see. But cheers. Sweetened coconut, sort of processed -y sort of thing. Um... It tastes like there's booze in it. Like, it smells like there's booze and it tastes like there's booze. I don't know if you could do that in this country. It's possible. I mean, that a certain amount of alcohol would be considered acceptable. But it really tastes like there's some sort of... Like a schnapps or a, a, a something, or some sort of coconut, maybe, liqueur that's in there. And that could just be like whatever they process the coconut sort of makes it taste like there's... There's a... Yeah. I don't care for that. I really like coconut. I really like chocolate. Well, I like coconut and chocolate. I like sort of a mountains or an almond joy. Things like that. I was hoping to enjoy this. I did not. Um, I mean, it's not like the worst thing I've ever had by me. It's, it's a chocolate bar, you know, whatever. But it's... It's a weird combination of smells and flavors, and I'm not... Maybe this one has just gone off, and it's just sort of fermented. I don't know, but... I mean, it's not supposed to expire for another five or six months, so... Yeah, not going to recommend that, but maybe if you want to try something that is unlike... that, This is the first one that's really... I don't think you would have gotten this taste in America. So, that's something. Yeah. That's not great. Uh, I only, the chocolate's far outweigh the hard candy, so I'm going to save the second hard candy and do another chocolate. So this is uh, also from Ryan. This is the Deli Bar. I don't know. I don't know why it's called Deli. Um, it looks like it. Uh, so it looks like the little uh, slogan here, slogan here, or the little the seal here is. Um, Virabeno uh, Olomutsi, which essentially means it comes from Olomutsi, which is a city sort of in um, Moravia, I believe, um, in the sort of eastern part of the country. Um, so I'm, I'm not guessing it's a product of Olomutsi. Uh, yeah, so, and I got, they had several flavors. I got pistachio, 
Um, because the other flavors they had were like coconut and chocolate, and I had I, those were represented already. So I thought, why not try for something different? So I like pistachio. See if this one smells boozy. This one smells more like a chocolate bar. There's, it looks almost identical to the market, though. Like, literally looks identical. Which is not surprising, I suppose. It comes from the same broad company. The chocolate is not... I don't know if you can see. Like, usually when a nice, shiny, sort of even... It's, I won't say it's lost its temper. Uh, and it could be just because, I, you know, I bought these yesterday or last night. But it's not... Yeah, it doesn't look like the highest quality chocolate. So this is definitely like pistachio nougat, I would say. Very nougaty. Oh, I don't think that's what Brits call it. I forget what Brits call nougat. But and there's oh, there's a thin layer of like caramel, I think. I don't know if you can see that. Thin layer of caramel on the top. Or something. Um You know, usually pistachio tastes like something. I can't pick out anything really that pistachio -y. and I mean, it's green, but, yeah, that's just sort of a chocolate bar with nougat on the inside. There's a hint, maybe, of some other, some other flavor, but it's not, it's not really noticeable. It's just kind of sweet. It's not bad. It's not great, though. I don't think I'll be going for that one again, either. Um, I think I'll give it to my roommates when they get home. Um, okay. So, yeah, it's a bit disappointing. Although, if, uh, maybe it's just the pistachio that's sort of a bit whatever. Uh, pistachio can be, I think, a hard flavor. A lot of times even pistachio ice cream doesn't really taste that pistachio-y. Um, but they do, like I said, they do make other flavors. I think they have a chocolate filling one. Maybe their coconut one is better than the market. In which case, maybe that's my new coconut uh, candy bar. Um, so let, let's get the hash turkey. This is a, another hard candy. Um, so this is kind of cheating. Uh, let me tell you why. So hash turkey are sort of another Nestle. I think these are almost all Nestle products, except for the Slavia. No, that's Nestle too, for God's sake. They make all the candy. Um, so... Um, anyway, so the hash turkey is sort of, it's an herbal lozenge sort of thing. It's almost like, they kind of lump it together with the cough drops, which is considered a can. It's, they, there's a fine line. So like Smith Brothers, you know, or Luden's. Candy or cough drop. Um, and the traditional classic flavor is, is anise flavored. It's licorice. And I really hate black licorice flavored. And I just... I wasn't gonna. I wasn't going to buy and eat something, even to watch, to, even to amuse you, amuse you. That I knew I would hate. That just. I'm like, this isn't that. I'm not doing that. This isn't fear factor. I'm not trying to find like disgusting foods and eat them on. Like, if I went into that, I would get the pig hearts you can buy in the deli aisle. You can buy pig hearts. Um, so I thought I should at least get a flavor I would like. Uh, and they have cherry. So I got cherry. So. Let's try the cherry, knowing that I'm cheating, and I'm not doing the traditional classic, which is like a licorice herbal sort of thing, which just sounds awful. Oh, it's very dark. Oh, you know what? Ah. Still licorice. Yeah. So, apparently the cherry is more of a, an overtone. Um, yeah, it's a, a, on the back I'm seeing now... Um, Originali recepturi so obsaham nashit strategy. So essentially, it's original recipe with other things, and so you can get original recipe also with like black currant and things. But these are still black licorice flavors. Uh, they taste like black licorice. I don't like that. Um, that said, these are not, and I'm not sure you can get them here. But if you um, if you go to sort of like very northern Europe, like more Scandinavia, you'll get the salted licorice. They're so weird. They put, like, chemical salts on licorice candy. Hard candy, usually. Uh, maybe other soft things. But hard candy, licorice-flavored, black licorice-flavored, with chemical salts. So not, like, NACL, but, like, 
other salts, like chemical salts, that just make them insanely salty in your mouth. And the flavor of the salt lingers with licorice. They're revolting. Um, so they're not as bad as that. But I don't need those. Uh, so you can go over there now. Um, oh, maybe I'll take them to my students tomorrow. Uh, so this is uh, uh, the Badani, uh, which is gelé de cocolade. I, I don't know if gelé, maybe it's gel, but chocolate. Um, so I think it's probably going to be a similar looking chocolate bar with banana stuff on the inside instead of coconut or pistachio. Well, this one has a rounded end. Kind of, oh, it's actually banana shaped. That's cute. Rather, <clears throat> yeah, well, I don't do that. Oh. That's. So it's not nougaty. It's, it's softer. And it's sort of, I thought you can see, especially because I can't get the angle right. It's sort of softer. Wetter, mushier. Um, it reminds me sort of like, I don't like the way it rips even. It reminds me most of a circus peanut, which is wet. And banana, it really could be any fruit. Like if you told me that was orange, I'd say, yeah, sure. Like I don't, I don't see how that's really banana eat. Um, it's a weird combination of textures. The chocolate layer on the outside is very thin, so it's really about the inside, and the chocolate just kind of gives it a bit of a overtone. I don't care for that. That's another. That's another swing and a miss for me. So, uh, the last one, Kofila. Uh, um, so this is original from 1923. Uh, so this predates communism. So maybe I'll be better. Um, and it um, it looks like it's a chocolate uh, candy bar with um, coffee in it. So let's see if I can open this stupid thing. Kind of smells vaguely like coffee. Just uh, little segments, which is nice and convenient. Oh wow, that's um, that definitely smells like coffee flavored candy or ice cream. It actually smells like it might be nice. It's strong. It's maybe a bit too sweet. Um, but it's actually quite good. I'm actually going to have another piece. Um, the coffee flavor goes well with chocolate. The chocolate is not overpowering. It is more sort of a mocha-y sort of combination between the two. Uh, the gel on the inside, the texture is not weird like it is on some of these other ones. So more like if you made at home little like candies that had this sort of coffee flavor filling. It has that sort of feeling if you've ever done that. I don't know. Anyone make chocolate at home? Anyway. Um, yeah. It's pretty decent. It's actually pretty decent indeed. It's creamy. Nice amount of sweetness. Like I said, maybe a hair too sweet. But it's not, it's not overly, it's not like cloying. There's still a strong enough coffee flavor that it sort of keeps the sweetness a little bit in check. Um, so yeah. So I'm going to pause to wash my hands. And then I'll be right back and we'll rank these. <coughs> Clean hands. Okay. Um, yeah, so let's do just broad sort of like maybe really enjoyed, fine, bleh. Just a simple three-tier system. I would say the really enjoyed is actually kind of limited. I would say I really enjoyed the lentilki because I've always quite liked uh, M&M's, and this is essentially just M&M's. And, and unlike this sort of, like, knockoff M&M's you'd get in, like, plastic candy canes in the States and stuff, they don't taste super cheap. 
It just started mine up cheap. Um, so Lentoki will happily buy again, probably. Um, the Haribo, but you saw that coming because I like gummies. Um, although, I, like I said, I don't know if this is my favorite flavor, but uh, maybe spread out the fizz is less noticeable. Um, so I'll put that in that category. Just sort of stand in for all the other Haribo products. Um, and, you know, maybe if, like, if I want a chocolate bar and I don't want one of the American, like a Snickers or something, I might go for the Coquilla. Um I think it would even be better on its own not coming after six other chocolate bars. But, yeah, I think definitely the winner of the chocolate bar side of things is the coffee bar, which is surprising because I'm not usually a coffee person in that sense. Anyway, um, so those are good. Lentilki, Haribo generally, and coffee bar. Buy those. Um, the things I will eat if they're in front of me. <laughs> uh, I would say the, the kashtani, the sort of standard chocolate bar, is just fine. Um... I guess I'd eat the deli bar. Their other flavors might be more interesting than the pistachio, but there's nothing about it that sort of made me go eat. Um, the Slavia are okay. I'll, I'll, I'll probably eat these sort of mindlessly over the next few days, maybe longer, um, just to sort of have something in my mouth. And they're okay. And I think that's where that category ends. So we have the Slavia, the weird sort of pepperminty chocolate candy, or pepperminty coffee candy, uh, Kashtani and uh, Deli. Just, they're fine. Like, if they're here, I'll eat them, but I don't think I'm going to seek them out again. And then we come to the things I don't want to finish eating, uh, which is definitely the Banani. Um, just the really artificialness of that sort of like circus peanut y sort of texture, but wetter. It's really, it's not good. Um, th not for me, at least. Maybe someone else would really enjoy this, but it's. Oof. Um, uh, the market is all in the same category. I don't know what's in here. I don't know what proof it is, but it really, it still smells like booze. Like, it, yeah, it's very boozy seeming. And sometimes coconut does smell like booze in a weird way, but it really tastes like it too, which is not great. Um, so I'll have to keep looking for my coconut chocolate candy bar. <clears throat> and then, um, <laughs> lastly, we have the, uh, Hashlurki, which I was stupid and thought didn't have anise, but in fact is still mainly anise flavors with a hint of cherry. Um, if you like licorice, you may think these are great. And, it, hell, if you like uh, weird circus peanuts, you might like the banani. Um, but these three, I might, I might have to just dispose of, especially these two because they're chocolate bars I've bitten into. I should have like used a knife and fork, and I could give them away to people. So yeah, so um, so I uh, if you are a uh, a ten dollar a posting uh, Patreon supporter, which bless you, um, I am tremendously grateful. Um, I am finally getting the care package ready, the first one, and I'm actually going to just combine the first quarter and the second quarter. So um, in early April, next few weeks, I'll be sending some of these, probably the ones I like, so I'll probably send some copula, and maybe some of the other ones that are sort of okay. I might even send a few individual ones of these um, to you, sort of like candies, and then there'll be a little, like, tchotchke-ish type thing just to show, hey, prog. Um... So yeah, so that's the kind of thing, that's the sort of joyous thing you'll be getting uh, in your first care package. Um, if you like me on video or you think uh, I'm good on video, you could also support the blog at the $3 uh, per posting um, level. That gives you monthly videos. Uh, this month's video will be going up probably this week. This is not this month's video. This is a, this is a blog post that is on this video. So it's a vlog, I suppose. Do we use that word anymore? I don't think so. So there's a blog post, uh, so there's a blog post, but there will be another video coming up soon about, uh, spring is arriving and there'll be some springy type things, uh, more ek outside. Ooh, secret. Um, so thank you for that. Uh, there is a, a, a prog cast coming in the next day or so. Um, I won't spoil what that's about, but there is one coming. Uh, but then this is the blog post of the week. So anyway, yeah, so if you want to, uh, if you want to support the blog and the ongoing, the ongoing work I'm doing here, um, for which I'm tremendously grateful, you can go to uh, patreon.com slash sjcoftonite. I'm going to put the 
thing here, you know, down here, uh, patreon.com slash S-J-C-A-U-S-T-E-N-I-T-E. Um, the minimum level for awards is $1 per post, so $1 per weekly blog post. So it's 4 to $5 a month. Um, I don't sort of like suddenly throw up six things or seven things or eight things to charge you. It's essentially it's weekly, so it's buck a week. Um, if you just want to throw some money my way and don't get the rewards, you can do less than that. You can actually change the amount and make it anywhere up to about a dollar a month. Uh, as long as it's at least a dollar a month, they'll credit, they'll charge you. So you can do 25 cents a post or 50 cents a post. Um, if, like, you know, you just like what you're reading, you like what you're seeing, a dollar a month is always welcome. Uh, Four dollars a month is even more welcome. Uh, Twelve, fifteen dollars a month is even most welcome. And insanely, some of you uh, are are so uh, supportive, uh, and I'm so grateful for being you're being so generous uh, to throw like ten bucks a post my way. Um, th- just to say, like what what that allows me to do, um, the Patreon support I'm receiving essentially is roughly equivalent to one entire week's worth of wages as a teacher here. Um, mind you, that doesn't mean I'm, like, living the high life by any means. Um, I mean, teaching pays an okay wage. It does not pay living the high life wages. Um, but what it allows me to do and it's been allowing me to do is teach a little bit less uh, than I might have to otherwise, you know, just take fewer classes, worry less about adding more students, being able to spend time every week, uh, not only writing these, creating the content, but also researching the things, finding the things to do. You know, this was an easy one instead to go across the street and buy a bunch of candy. Um, but like the one about, you, know, you like the blog post, but the one about Charles IV, that took hours to like sort of put together and everything. And I really enjoyed doing it. I like doing it. I w- would probably do it anyway, even if I didn't have Patreon support. But the Patreon support makes it a priority for me. It means that if I do it, I know there will be incentive which is important, and it means I have to do, I feel like I have to do something every week instead of doing something once a month, once every two months, and then the blog would sort of be fallow. Um, and it also means that, uh, you know, probably next weekend or the weekend after, I'm not sure yet, I'm still planning, I'm going to be getting out of the city finally and going and seeing other things. I was going to try to go today, but um, I had some other commitments, uh, so I, I wasn't able to really get out of the city today. But it's gorgeous weather. Spring is here. I can finally start traveling and going and seeing and reporting back to you about castles and town squares and beer and things, you know. So, anyway, that's my spiel. Uh, if you stopped watching, I don't blame you. Although, if you stopped watching, you're not hearing this. So, uh, thank you again for your support. Uh, thank you again for watching. Uh, please watch my other videos if you haven't seen those, the ones that are available, or read my other posts if this is the first time you've seen it. Um, you can uh, find the links. You can do all the stuff. Thank you again. Uh, and I'm going to have some until you. And I'll talk to you later. Bye!